We are back on Taking Care of Business on News Talk 1180 KERN, 1230 KGEO, 1410 KERI, and now in Albuquerque, New Mexico on 1000 KKIM. Mark Twain once said that history doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. Our guest by phone, Patrick O'Donnell, author and combat historian, his latest book, Dog Company. So, Pat, do you think Mark Twain was right? History doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. I mean, looking at some of your books, you've got kind of a same central theme to them. It's a great theme. Uh, you know, the story's talking about the American spirit and what we've done. Do we kind of repeat ourselves in history here as Americans? We repeat ourselves and we constantly forget our own history. Um, right now, I think American principles and values that are, are being kind of washed away in many ways. The, the things that we were founded on, uh, individualism, um, leadership, there's so many things that are just being kind of washed away by globalism. There's a very, we have some very, very unique characteristics that make, that set us apart from everyone else. And as you look back at what, where we started, and we've in many ways unrecognizable, my books, um, I think, try to capture sort of the uniqueness of our character. Um, many of my books are kind of about the guy next door. There's just, you know, your uncle or whatever that never talks about the war, but did something extraordinary. And then goes back to work and then never talks about what he did. In most cases, every one of my books is about an untold story like that. And I, I, um, I'm fascinated by, by our history and, and how we were founded and, and really about just how a single person, in many cases, can change the course of history. Now, it's interesting, some of the things you just said. I have a brother-in-law who led a platoon in Vietnam, and uh, he got wounded, of course, and spent a lot of time in the hospital. But he won't talk about what happened in Vietnam. And I talk to a lot of veterans, and a lot of them won't even uh, speak about what took place there. No, they, they won't talk about the guys in Vietnam, but just ask yourself how many Iraq War of Afghanistan veterans that you know will talk about their experiences. We were one is unique in the sense that uh, I was there. These guys talked to me because they knew I shared their experience. Otherwise, they would never have talked to anyone about it. And, and most of us that have been through that uh, Fallujah or won't talk about the experience because Americans are so far removed from the military. It's not part of, it's an all-volunteer force, which makes it extremely elite and, and, and excellent militarily, but it doesn't necessarily represent society in, as a whole, in general. It, from all, um, it, it's not like the draft, for instance, at Vietnam, which captured a lot of different socioeconomic levels, etc. It's 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 removed, um, and we are removed from it in most cases. And you know, most people don't understand what what men in Afghanistan and or men and women in Afghanistan and Iraq went through. Well, for I the see. Most part, I see an example of that is the uh, soldier that comes back is willing to go back, and yet the public what doesn't want to support the war, which leads us now to Somalia. What's going to take place in Somalia? The public is totally against it. And uh, probably 50% of the legislators are against it, but the president seems to want to go in there and support al-Qaeda, and I don't understand that at all. You meant, you meant Syria. Syria, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, that's a very complicated issue. I mean, I, I think that the, the, um, the biggest threat to America, or one of them, is, is the Iranians. They've meddled in Iraq. They've basically, you know... Sadly, we fought there. We spent a trillion dollars on the place, and now it's a—it's effectively it's run by the Iranians. And, and the Iranians are, are meddling in Syria. The Hezbollah is, is heavily is their basically their elite force that's doing all the heavy lifting. And you know, it's 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 so ironic that I mean, I was. I was almost killed by Al Qaeda. I was almost killed by um, by 
by foreign fighters from from uh, from the Caucasus, and it's interesting that they are the ones that are actually bleeding for a lot of the Syrians. I mean, it's 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 a it's a very complicated situation, and I don't necessarily support um, military action there, and I don't. The way that the president has gone about the entire process has been a disaster. Total. On just so many levels. I mean, it, it shows, it, it just, it's just not the right way to go about things. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I totally agree, Pat. Uh, our guest by phone, Pat O'Donnell, author, combat historian. Pat, I want to talk about, uh, and I totally agree with, with your assessment on American individualism and, and our character. And that leads me to, your, to one of your other books that, that was very touching, uh, Give Me Tomorrow, story of a Marine unit uh, in, uh, in Korea. And uh, anybody that's gone through Marine boot camp, as I have, has heard about the Marines in, in Korea and, and the sacrifices they gave. But your, your book, Give Me Tomorrow, really, really touched me. How did you come up with that title? Tell us that story. Hmm. Uh, all of the books that I've written are, are, are serendipity in many ways. The, the book has come to me in one way or another. And when I came back from Fallujah, I, I came back to the United States alone. I, I came back with the men that I fought with, but I, was, I, I came back alone in the sense that I asked my parents not to come to Camp Pendleton, and I didn't want to deal with with, uh, with really anything. I was trying to, to get around my arms around the war and what I experienced. And I was greeted at Camp Pendleton by some senior Marines that were combat veterans of Korea. And they said to me, we... we uh, we were in George Company 3-1, the same unit you were in, in Fallujah, and you actually carried our battle guide on. And I was struck by that. I was like, that's, that's incredible. And then they said to me, in sort of an, a random act of kindness, would you like a ride to the train station? And I said, I'd love it. And they gave me a ride, and then they took me to lunch and said, we were George Company 3-1, and we held a key hill at the Chosen Reservoir against the Chinese regiment. And a company of Marines is only about 250 men. A regiment, a Chinese regiment, was about 2,500 or more. And somehow against, you know, 10 to 1 odds, these guys held that hill, which was the most important hill in the Chosen Reservoir. And the reason why the, the title of the book comes out is the cover of that book is a George Company member. And it's one of the most famous pictures of the Korean War taken by David Duncan. And and he asked that Marine what he wanted for Christmas. It was sort of a, a little tongue-in-cheek. But the Marine had been through so much. He had survived East Hill against this Chinese regiment and just a, against 50 below degree weather, um, no food, etc. And he said to me, he said to the photographer, give me tomorrow. That's what he wanted, another day of life. And that is where that, that, that title of the book comes from. Yeah, that, that, was, that was very touching when I read that. Uh, Bloody George Company, which is what it was also called, was the most decor decorated company, I think, in the Marines in the Korean War. But it's, it's really an unrecognized company. Why? Um, a lot of factors led into that. Um, it's called the Forgotten War um, for a reason. <laughs> well, a lot of these guys never talked about it. America doesn't really even... It, it was the first you know, major hot war of the, of the Cold War. It, there's a lot of people that just don't really talk about it. And then George Company was... Was, was typical of the, that Korean War generation that didn't discuss the war. And then in the history of the Marine Corps, the company was just left out for some reason um, of the general histories. And I've got my own theories on that, why, maybe political. 
there's possibilities that you know I, I've got a, a lot of theories on that one, but yeah. no real facts. But the, the fact of the matter is, the history was not told until that book was written. Yeah, Pat. Unfortunately, and Discovery Channel is going to do a film on it uh, this fall. It's going to come out called Against the Odds. Ah, uh, that'll be great, Pat. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Give us your website before we leave. My personal website is patrickkodonnell.com, and then there's a, a website for the for Dog Company. It's dogcompanybook.com, and the books are on Amazon or, or barnesandnoble.com, or you can get it at any bookstore. I, I highly recommend his books. I just bought three of them myself. Pat, we've got to have you back. Love to come back on. Okay, thank you so much for the time. We'll Thank be, you. We'll be back in a couple of minutes on Taking Care of Business on Kern Radio News Talk 1180.